Hello, my friend. Welcome back to the Mindset Check Podcast. I'm your host, Misha McKittrick. This is a podcast where we believe that as you take time for a mindset check, you have more power than you think you do. And where we also believe that there is purpose in the fog, or in other words, there is purpose in times where you feel lost. This is part two of a two-part episode all about this theme and this topic. If you are joining us for the first time. The first season of the podcast, we went through sort of my side of the story and then the things that I went through before meeting and marrying Jake. And then season two is Jake's side of the story and things that he went through before meeting and marrying me. (laughs) And the story is currently talking about how Jake just came home from serving a religious mission and we are dating and we are totally hitting it off and we cover kind of a lot in part one of this episode of of time, right? We cover kind of a lot of of things that were happening and Jake comes home and we're kicking it off and everything's going really incredible and then all of a sudden both of us are faced with this confusion and this knowing that we needed to push pause and we were both confused and and inwardly hurting and at the end of part one we started to talk about how there's purpose in the fog how when we were in the redwoods we learned all about the trees and how the trees were able to start absorbing moisture from the fog in their leaves that they couldn't get all the nutrients that they needed from the soil and so that was a way of being able to be grateful for the fog because it is the, f- the fog that is allowing the beauty that we're seeing when we're visiting the redwoods. And it makes it feel less frustrating <laughs> when you worked to get to a, a certain place that you wanted to see that's covered in fog. And it helps us to understand that we can momentarily shift our focus to be able to gain what we need while the fog is present to then be able to even more fully enjoy what is really there for us to partake in. (laughs) All right, so this is where we jump in. We jump right into this space of finding purpose in the fog. Let's go. I hope last week left you just a little bit curious in your own life that you were able to ponder some of the things, some of the things that we talked about. I think it's very interesting that as a human being, we might have a tendency to fall into a negative loop when we're stuck like this, right? When we're stuck, instead of being able to see the purpose in the fog, right? Like having that type of a shift. I love this quote by Neil Maxwell that says, just as doubt, despair, and desensitization go together, so do faith, hope, charity, and patience. The latter qualities must be carefully and constantly nurtured, however, whereas doubt and despair, like dandelions, need little encouragement in order to sprout and spread. Alas, despair comes so naturally to the natural I think that quotes a very incredible representation of what happens to us when we're not nurturing the other qualities, the good things in our life, right? And so I think it's really important to be able to take apart in this episode, what are the actions and what are the things that we can do when we are actually feeling like we're stuck, when we're feeling lost, when we've been maybe given direction that doesn't make sense to us. So first, I just think it's really important to find our footing and surround ourselves with reminders of what we know, right? Reminders of who you are and remembering that you are a very advanced species (laughs) that has figured out things like how to make jam out of cactus, okay? (laughs) <laughs> and that's not even that complicated compared to the 
the incredible neuroscience and the, you know, if you think about NASA, you think about like what people have been able to do flying into space. I mean, this is our species. Getting a reminder of that helps us know that we're going to be able to find a creative way to move through the mud. I think just the reminder of what it is that we would want to be nurturing when we're in a foggy time, nurturing incredible qualities in our life so that those come to fruition more, that's an incredible equation. But I think just the reminder of of who you are, what you might have experienced in the past, you know, it's always easier to look back on life and go, wow, now I can see clearly, like, why that happened. Like, I'm sitting here right now and I can tell you why this split or this confusion came for Jake and I. I can tell you right now but I couldn't tell you when we were in it. I didn't know. All I could do is trust. And looking back at our past experiences helps us to be able to move into that trust, to be able to find our footing, to surround ourselves with reminders of, okay, this is how things have worked out for me in the past, so maybe right now I'm just not seeing a a clearer picture. So that's one thing that I think is something that you can surround yourself. Another thing I think is really important is to look for the light inside of what feels dark. Look for, you know, that's a huge theme for me um, to be able to do that when you're feeling low or when you're feeling, but even in the moments where you feel like the lights have suddenly gone out on a really brilliant, you know, momentum that you're having in life. Look for the light. You know, you've been given this heart. And in the heart, everything is more simplified than than what is happening inside of your brain. Your brain will take you down 15 different paths, right? Maybe, Maybe way more than that. But in your heart, you really only have one answer. And so one of the really great things that I think we can do when we're in the fog is to just be still and to be quiet and to go inside and to listen, to take the time to actually connect with our heart so that we can continually feel guided in what is supposed to be happening in the way that we're supposed to be spending our time while we're in a pause. And I think just reminding yourself that you're capable of that. You're capable of going inside and finding the answer. And then when you and then when you go inside and you and you look for that answer. Spend time listening, but spend time asking. Spend time, you know, saying, what else is there for me to hear here? What else am I supposed to know? How can I move forward? What's a step I can take, right? That's a really important place to be in the pondering and the contemplating because perhaps the reason that you feel stuck is a sign that you need to make a a change, right? You got to change what you're moving towards. Or maybe there's something that's supposed to be going just a bit different with the way and the direction that things are going. And maybe it's for you to see that that situation is no longer for you. Whatever it is, it's like knowing that there's purpose in the fog that's happening. Being able to step back and to disassociate for a moment, to be able to have space and to say, okay, I'm here. And I'm listening and I'm trying to be aware. That's one of the most important moves that you can make. And often what actually happens when we is, is we fall into frustration, right? 
just like the quote that I read you about falling into despair and such. And that will actually block you from seeing and hearing and feeling what you need to be feeling because of the fog. And it's important to also think like, okay, well, maybe there's something that you can't see. And the stuckness is allowing you to step back and see it. It's allowing you to really, you know, pedal backwards and go like, okay, well, let me look at this kind of fly outside the situation and look down on it, right? There's a story about a tree that rejected a bird that I want to share with you to maybe help you see things a little bit differently. So there was a bird and this bird was pregnant and at the point that she needed to lay her eggs. So she needed to find a shelter where she could do that. And it was hot and it was in the summer and it seemed like there wasn't anything that she could find that was truly the right place. And she kept trying and finally she found something. And this bird was so tired and she came to this place in the tree where she could lay her eggs. But then all of a sudden something bad happened. This tree refused to give shelter to this bird. And this tree rejected the bird. The tree was clear that it would not give any kind of space to this bird. And upon hearing this, this bird got depressed and annoyed. And without saying anything, she left the tree and kept searching for another tree. Well, the bird found shelter eventually. And the next tree accepted her. And she was able to make a home and lay her eggs. And some time later, when the rainy season came, the tree that didn't accept the bird fell on the earth and was about to flow with the rain. When the bird saw this, she said, <laughs> That's what you get when you rejected me. Now you suffer. And the tree heard her response and said, I knew that I was not strong enough and I couldn't hold myself in the rain. That's why I didn't give you a place. I knew that if I accepted you, you and your children would die when the rains came. <laughs> it's just such a beautiful way to be able to see that things aren't always what, what we see in our mind. Maybe the situation is a little bit different. Maybe the timing isn't right. Right? Or maybe there's another circumstance that will be made known to you. Like, one of the things that happened for Jake and I is that this was something that came along because we needed to know for sure. We needed to be able to truly, truly know that the choice that we were making to move forward and get married was the right choice. And there's a story that I love that is shared by Matt Holland and he talks about going with his dad on this ride to the Colorado River. And they took all of these dirt roads and back roads to get there and they got there and had a great day and had a great view and it was a good experience. But they, at the end of the day, towards when they were starting to lose light, they got in the car and were traveling home. Well, the path that they had taken were so many different offshoots of dirt roads that trying to traverse back the way that they came was actually a little bit confusing. So they had an experience, this boy and his dad, where they came to a fork in the road and they knew if they didn't choose the right way that they wouldn't be able to navigate and have enough light to help them navigate to get back home right and so they decided that they were going to make it a matter of prayer and they prayed and they both got a very distinct impression to take the road on the left and so they took the road on the left and they traveled for about 10 minutes 15 minutes and that road came to an abrupt stop <laughs> it's 
So they turned around and went back to the fork in the road and took the other one, went to the right. They made it almost all the way home, and at the end of that drive, they were having a conversation. The boy wanted to know, Dad, why do you think we both felt that we were supposed to go on the road to the left? And the, the dad said to him, I've been thinking that same thing all the way home. And the dad told and explained to the boy, what I've been thinking about is what if we took the road to the right and things started to look unfamiliar to us. And we became so confused that after 30 minutes on that drive, we decided to turn around and go back to the road and take the left. I think that by actually taking that wrong road, we were really clear of the path that we were supposed to be on. And I love that story because it illustrates and shows us that sometimes when we take the path that's not the right path, it just helps us to be more clear on the direction that we really actually should be going. Sometimes things happen in our life because we need to know for sure. Sometimes that's what the fog's about. See, unless we sit in the moment and the, the juiciness of the, the, <laughs> the, the confusion and the doubt, unless we actually look at that as though there's purpose in it, it's difficult to figure that out. Another thing that I think that we can do is to check in with others. And when we do that and we have conversations with other people, we can start to see the purpose more clearly. We've shared our story with another couple who felt like they were in doubt about whether or not they should get married. And it's the coolest experience because for whatever reason, something that we shared with them, and I don't even remember exactly what now, but it helped them to see that the fog they were going through was also helping them see that the right road was to actually move forward and to, to get married. It's like so cool to be a part of their story by sharing our story. So when we check in with other people, it helps us to see more clearly the purpose. You know that American Indians, they actually have someone who is assigned to be a hope giver. Isn't that cool? I've thought about that and I've tried to research it. If you, any of you have anything on that, I, it, it feels so fascinating and beautiful to me. But like, that's something that I would love to do. I would love to be the one that's like, hey, when you need a little bit of hope, come to me and I'll, I'll help you see it. Ah, like, don't we all just need that? We need direction and we need to be able to, man, if we had someone that we could go to without a doubt every time that we felt like we experienced or came across doubt. What's interesting is that even though I'm saying that right now, my my heart is telling me that there is a place. Right? And it's it's going inside and then communicating. It's going into our heart and being able to access those whisperings, the things that can be given to us if we if we take the time to go inside and look for the answers. I love thinking about how different it feels when I'm in my mind <laughs> and I often feel very debilitated and overwhelmed and spending a lot of time thinking and it it can be way too much and what is in our heart is the answers it is the whispering it is whatever action we should be taking, if there's action we should be taking. Sometimes sometimes we're just supposed to sit and observe for whatever reason. But I also like thinking, you know, what's the next right step? What is the thing that I should be focusing on while I'm in this moment? And what is the great benefit that that will bring to my life 
the idea that I have this pause right now. You know, I had my oldest son, he wrecked on his snowboard once at the very beginning of a season. And he was in high school, probably his his sophomore year, I think, and he broke his arm. And it was a, it was a pretty it's hard to lose your right arm for a long time. But there was a thing that he found in that and he found a new hobby. He learned how to make music and create beats and he spent his time doing more of that and that's now what his passion is. That's what he loves to do. It's interesting that the pauses in our life bring us clarity. They can bring us something more than we ever thought we could gain from the pause because we were frustrated, right? No doubt my son was frustrated that he broke his arm, that he had to sit out on some soccer and that he for sure had to sit out on that snowboarding season. It can be frustrating, but it's important to move out of that so that we experience something different. I like this quote by Einstein. It says, life is like riding a bicycle. To keep your balance, you must keep moving. So no matter what the fog is, no matter what it is that feels, you know, like it's it's holding you hostage, you know, you're stuck, you're in the mud, whatever it is. Have the the idea that you've that you've really got to take action and continue and move forward. Unless you have an overwhelming sense of, you know moving slow or being still because that that very much could be part of what you're supposed to do but just because our action gets stopped in one direction imagine if they never would have gone down the road to the left if they wouldn't have kept going forward they would have never figured it all out they would have never seen that that was actually not the correct road to go down or coming back and not going down the right road or however you want to look at it. It's important that we take action. Really, I hope that all of these different angles that we're looking at helps you simply consider how life is different when we begin looking for the purpose in what feels like a pause. Maybe if we start to see life from the perspective that there's a reason for everything and that things happen for our good, right? When we can start to take that on, it, it becomes a completely different story. We start to look for the reasons. We start to look for what we're supposed to find in these moments. We start to be able to lean into that trust. We find patience. We can be curious right? In place of the frustration. I like this fact about eagles, this fact from nature. I think we learn so much from nature. And I know I say that a lot. I just love it. But did you know that an eagle can foresee when a storm is approaching long before it breaks? And instead of hiding, the eagle will fly to a high point and wait for the winds to come. When the storm hits, It sets its wings so that the wind can pick it up and lift it above the storm. While the storm rages below, the eagle soars above it. The eagle does not escape or hide from the storm. Instead, it uses the storm to lift it higher. It rises on the stormy winds, which others dread. When the storms of life or challenges hit us, we can rise above them and soar like the eagle that rides the storms wins. Don't be afraid of the storms or the challenges in your life. Use it to lift you higher. Don't you love it? (laughs) Don't you love the idea that uh, it all happens for a reason and there's always a place you can be. You can be above the storm. You can be, you know, going into your heart. You can find the purpose for the fog and I know that sometimes 
we don't always find the complete purpose of the fog when you're in it. I know that. But I know that it comes. I know that later you're able to see so much more clearly why you had that fog in your life. And that's definitely something, you know, that's worth cataloging when you're in it. You know, to gain that trust. Cataloging your past experiences and being able to check in with what resolved from that situation. Because honestly, sometimes we live life and if we don't pause to take a look at it, we don't see it. And when we pause to take a look at it, that's actually what builds our trust because we see it so clearly. It's one of the most powerful things that you can do when you're in the fog is catalog your past trust that everything really is working out for you. I hope that you can see that there are many, many directions that you can take when the fog comes. Finding your footing, looking for the light, going into your heart, leaning into trust, also being able to widen your perspective to say maybe there's something that you can't see or maybe you're stuck because there's something you need to change about the direction that you're going. Maybe the timing isn't right or maybe you need to know for sure. Maybe you can check in with others just to have the growth that comes on both sides, that comes on your side and that comes on the other person's side that's able to be your hope giver. It's incredible how many directions you can go, how many different things there are to shift your attention towards when there's fog and allowing it and knowing that it's there for a reason and it's okay. And I hope that through that, you can see that you have more power than you think you do. All right, friend, I hope you loved the combo of part one and part two of this episode and that it brought you a little bit of insight either in whatever you're going through right now or in the wisdom of looking back and building that trust bank, the one that you move forward with a little bit more sure and steady when things do happen in your life that cause you to feel stuck or that you're a little bit of in confusion. (laughs) It happens to all of us, but just remember that there's always purpose in the fog. There's always something for you to, to do. There's always a direction for you to be going or something for you to be observing, seeing, learning, thinking about. It's an incredible thing that we get to work with. If you have any questions or comments about this episode or any of my episodes or whatever I'm up to, I would love to hear from you. Go ahead and reach out to me by DMing me on Instagram at my friend Misha, that's M-E-S-H-A, or you can email me at hello at myfriendmisha.com. Also a reminder to support this podcast by sharing it and also by using my link when you shop on Amazon. It's as easy and as simple as typing in amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash my friend Misha. I would super appreciate that. And just a reminder, it doesn't cost you more. It just gives a kickback to the person who referred you. And lastly, just wanted to say thank you for being with me and leave you with these words from Wayne Dyer that I love so much. It says, you are not stuck where you are unless you decide to be. Until next time, my friend.